Robert C. DeLarge. Hello everyone, today we will tell you everything there is to know about Robert C. DeLarge. Robert DeLarge, a wealthy Charleston, South Carolina resident, was elected to the United States House of Representatives as an ally of Republican Governor Robert Scott's scandal-plagued administration. Despite his political alliance with Scott, DeLarge was frequently at odds with the state Republican Party and rarely defended the state's corrupt government. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon before we begin to ensure that you never miss a video. Birth Robert Carlos DeLarge was born in Aiken, South Carolina on March 15, 1842. Although some records indicate that DeLarge was born into slavery, he was most likely the son of free mixed race parents. Education Robert DeLarge attended a primary school in North Carolina and Wood High School in Charleston, South Carolina. Early work experience DeLarge worked as a tailor and a farmer before joining the Confederate Navy during the Civil War. Perhaps regretting the source of his financial windfall, DeLarge later donated most of his wartime earnings to the Republican Party. Nonetheless, by 1870, he had amassed more than $6,500. He rose through Charleston's social circles and joined the Brown Fellowship Society, a premier organization for people of mixed race. Following the war, the large work as an agent in the Freedmen's Bureau for the Republican state government. He became an organizer for the South Carolina Republican Party, serving on various state convention committees. He presided over the Credentials Committee at the 1865 Colored People's Convention, held at Charleston's Zion Church. At the 1867 South Carolina Republican Convention, he chaired the Platform Committee and served on the Franchise and Elections Committee at the state's 1868 Constitutional Convention. DeLarge was a relatively conservative African-American politician of the time. He supported voter literacy testing but opposed compulsory education while supporting state-funded and integrated schools. However, he advocated for more radical measures, arguing that the government should punish ex-Confederates by retaining their property and disenfranchising them. The large was elected to the State House of Representatives in 1868, where he chaired the Ways and Means Committee. He was also a member of the State Sinking Fund Commission and a board for the mentally ill. In 1870, the legislature appointed DeLarge as land commissioner in search of a black appointee. DeLarge oversaw the sale and transfer of nearly 2,000 small tracts of land to be paid for over eight years in his quest to help South Carolina's poor, but allegations of fraud tainted his tenure on the land commission. Opponents suspected DeLarge of stealing money from the commission to fund his congressional campaign, but he was never charged with a crime. Major Contributions as a freshman member, the largest legislative agenda lacked continuity, owing primarily to the large workload created by Bowen's challenge. The large offered an unsuccessful amendment early in his term to provide $20,000 to rebuild a Charleston orphanage. He also supported a bill that granted former Confederates amnesty, but he believed that loyal black and white Southerners should be protected from intimidation and terror. However, DeLarge was emphatic that his Charleston district had no reported cases of outlawry, but admitted that until within the last few months, no one upon the face of God's earth could have convinced me that a secret organization existed in my state to commit murder, arson, and other outrages. Life after public job. The rigors of defending his seat in the 42nd Congress took their toll on DeLarge's fragile health, leaving him with few options but to retire. Alonzo Ranzier, a black politician, was elected. The large returned to Columbia, the state capital, and later moved to Charleston after Governor Scott appointed him magistrate. Soon after, on February 14, 1874, he died of tuberculosis at 31. Despite the largest strained relationship with South Carolina Republicans, city magistrates across the state closed their doors on the day of his funeral to pay their respects. Robert DeLarge was an important figure in American history, black conservative politics, and the Republican Party. If you like this video and want to learn more about history, 
please like and subscribe to this channel, share it with your friends, and press the bell icon to be notified. Thank you.